Hey. All right. Are we live? Yeah. Okay, cool. Hey guys, what's up? Um, welcome to the save point. I know I'm supposed to sing the intro, so I'm doing this specifically <laughs> for Mondo because he begged me before I introduce who we are. Welcome. This is the save point. Ba -da 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 -ba -da um, yeah, welcome. Today we have Millie Codes as our guest and just me, Alyssa Rosa, as your host. Mondo will not be joining us today. Sad face. But yeah, we're going to be talking about women in tech and what better way to do that than with Millie, the coding queen. Um, but yeah, I want Millie to introduce herself to everyone for those who are listening or watching live right now on the VGA stream for the event. We are celebrating Women's History Month. So yeah, Millie, take it away. Introduce yourself, let people know who Hello. you are. Hello, uh, my name is Millie. I am currently a software engineer working in Brooklyn, New York. I've been a software engineer for about the last two and a half years. And my path to becoming a software engineer was actually a career switch from, I guess, like a retail sales into a boot camp, And that's how it happened. Awesome, awesome. So you definitely know more than I do when it comes to this conversation obviously but as we know there has been a lack of women in the industry so i, I really want to know like what was it for you that pushed you to go towards it um and who did you kind of like look to as like a guide um and how important was it for you to have a guide in this industry oh well i think it was very important once i got to the point where i actually wanted to make it a career but even when I was younger, I was interested in technology. It was kind of like a, you know, a, a general curiosity, uh, just being introduced to technology. Uh, I was born before the internet. So as I was growing up, uh, the internet be became a thing. Um, so you might be similar to me in that, like, you know, when yes. we were kids, there was no internet. Uh, yeah. And like, once I became a teenager, that slowly became a reality and you know once I think it was like in in middle school maybe I had my first experience in school because we had computer lab classes so we'd go like twice a week to the computer lab um, and then in high school of course we had open computer lab access as well um, but in terms of like growing up in my household we didn't really have a computer until I was you know in high school yeah. uh, but even at that point there was a lot to to be interested in and it was kind of like a, a wild wild west i guess the internet because you really didn't like you know once you got on the internet you, you kind of didn't know what was there there was a lot of uh things to discover and uh things to understand and i became really really interested in it but i didn't realize that you know working within computers and information technology was even a possible career path growing up uh, it was always something that was a hobby because I was interested in it, just, you know, with my curiosity. So I never really thought it was possible. Um, nor did I ever see anybody that had a job in what I'm doing right now. You know, when I was right. growing up, you know, I had my mom, she was a homemaker. I had my dad, he was a mechanic. And, you know, yeah, there was nothing. There was, there was no yeah. examples. Yeah, there was no examples. Uh, or even it, it, of women uh, mm -hmm. doing, you know, those kinds of jobs. So it wasn't even something that was in my head. Uh, and then I started early on with uh, websites. Like uh, I bought a domain and I was like designing with Photoshop. Uh, I set up a WordPress, Word, WordPress blog. I had a MySpace. I was making layouts, um, wow. copying HTML codes and stuff. Yeah, you were probably the person making my layout and I would just copy yeah. the coding and put it on my MySpace and I had no idea. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Someone actually already asked a question. Do you do more front-end programming, back-end programming, or 
full stack or anything else they want to know exactly what it yeah. is that so uh from uh personally when i was growing up i was more interested in front end because it was just that's visually what we were working on with myspace mm -hmm. it was all front end because it was just like html css a little bit of javascript here and there and so that that was mainly it when wordpress came along i got into more php and backend stuff uh with uh, databases mm -hmm. and then photoshop was for like defining layouts and then um i continued to learn about that javascript was really really hard on my own and finally when i went to a boot camp the boot camp that i went to uh did html and css of course and then introduced us to javascript as well as ruby and then Ruby on Rails as well. So those are the main technologies that I use every day, mm -hmm. uh, along with React. I'm learning more React. Um, and then a little bit of backend with Elixir. Um, not a lot there, uh, but I would definitely like to learn more Elixir and also would like to learn more about uh, Python. I think Python. Okay, cool. Yeah, very yeah, interested uh, in that language. Belgraves just asked, no Python, but you just answered the question. And then also Richie was asking about, uh, do you use any frameworks like React? And you just answered the question as well. So she's well seasoned, you guys. She's, she's very well seasoned. <laughs> um, I was very lucky that we got to meet before this. And I've, I've been learning along the way because I am one of those people who didn't know that there's more than one possibility to go to get to or to be in the tech world you know it's not something that's really glamorized and i'm more on the gaming end and like the podcasting end versus like behind the scenes and really like making these these games or coding or anything like that um and we kind of talked about that you know like why don't we know about these opportunities and where does this mi miscommunication come comes from you know like where are we missing the mark because there was a higher percentage of um, women that were in tech altogether in the 90s, and then it suddenly just dropped. So we really want to talk about, you know, since they're raising money, VGA guys are raising money for VG, uh, for Girls Who Code, excuse me. Um, we really want to keep honing in on that and making sure that we're sending a message to young girls or anybody that knows young girls or young women or even older women who want to be in this industry. Um, so what do you think is like keeping girls from being in tech? Like, you know, is it like a lack of support or, or just like not knowing that there's information out there, that there's ways to get into these programs? Like, what do you think we could do or like what could be done? I think the biggest thing is just lack of uh, information and mm -hmm. access to that information. We are seeing now, like, especially in the last few years in, pop culture and media, social media, we are seeing women are, you know, software engineers, mechanical engineers, we're seeing women architects, we're seeing uh, five star, you know, Michelin chefs that are women. And, you know, years ago, that was definitely not the case. So I think that, you know, with the, you know, invention of the internet and people being more connected and people being able to kind of, you know, with the internet, you can get, you know, into a community that is into what you're into. Like, no matter what you're into, you can find your group of people on the internet. You can find careers that 10, 15 years ago, we didn't even know existed because of the internet. So right. I think that just access um, and just knowing, uh, I think also with uh, that lack of access and lack of knowing is also kind of uh, a class issue too because mm -hmm. you see people that have the means that have the money they're they're they have that access uh there's um people who live in you know communities that are low income that are on the you know poverty line and we see public schools that don't get financial um you know given any financial uh i guess means uh, right. the same as a community that you know, has, has money it. or, yeah. So, you know, when you have money and means, you have access to technology because, I mean, it's money. You can buy yeah. access to those things. And I think that when you're coming from a low income or a more diverse community, those things are really missing. And mm -hmm. I think that, you know, with the internet and everybody also being more aware comes that money. 
And I was telling you before, like, we could definitely solve this problem. Money, yes. we could throw money at it and it's helping. I mean, yeah, definitely. money helps. Uh, money can help us get our hardware. We can get laptops to kids. Yes. We can, you know, fund a summer program that pays for their Metro card or their transportation and okay. feeds them and shows them, you know, the basics of HTML, CSS and JavaScript so they can, you know, be more interested you know, in, in these types of careers. Right. Um, and we can also tell them that you're going to make a good amount of money. Yes. There, is a, <laughs> there is so much opportunity for individuals right now in technology to get into a high level of income. And it's not really that hard. I mean, a junior developer in New York City is averaging what, like 70 or 80K a year on really a salary. Good. Yeah. So, I mean, that that alone will push a household income, you know, to another level and it's going to provide for not just an individual, but an entire family. Right. And, you know, when we have these opportunities, we can pass them on to other people. Right. So yes. I think that, you know, it's, it's just a step in the right direction, but it's like a huge, huge step that we could take that can help yeah. us all. I definitely agree. And I think even with what, you know, VGA is doing with like, you know, giving to charity and things like that, or just giving to these programs, it's, it's just important because it lets these young girls know, or just like young kids in general across the board, but we're specifically, specifically talking about young girls that they can do this. And there are a group of people, or at least so many people that are going to sit here and support them. Um, Zeus asked, I don't know if you know of, of any, he wants to know if there's anything that can, that exists that possibly introduce programming to a child younger than three. Um, I personally don't know anything, but I don't know if you know of any programs that start when they're actually like toddlers or like younger. Uh, for, for younger, uh, for that age, it's a little bit difficult, but we're finding now children's books, um, maybe children's uh, videos or movies or, or shows uh, that are introducing more technical and logical things, more uh, mm -hmm. science, technology and math, even things like Dora the Explorer and yes. Bob the Builder. Like these are introducing new concepts to children at a younger age. So I think that if you're a young parent or you have somebody very young in your life, that it's going to be very essential for you to support them and also take your ideas um, and your biases about gender and try to mm -hmm. just get them out of the way because that's yes. not going to help any. Speaking of biases of gender, do you, do you feel like another reason why girls, uh, the communication is not there is because of the lack of women that we see? Um, do you think that's like vital for them uh, at all? Or just in society, like, are we not talking about like, should we talk more about women in tech and how it could be beneficial? I remember when we had our conversation earlier this week, you were saying there are things that only women can really speak to, especially in the tech world and how it impacts us and how it affects us versus having a male be the voice for that. So do you think that's important at all? Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it's definitely important. Um, and there there's a lot of history early on in technology and computer science where women, especially like mathematicians and um, like building computers and things like that, where women were essential. Women, women were the ones that were punching the numbers. Women were the ones that were creating these codes. You know, there's women early on, black women at NASA that were creating these programs for these, you know, missions to go, you know, to... Yeah. Uh, get out there so and definitely those stories not necessarily that they're silenced but they're not celebrated um okay. so now within the last few years like i said we see you know references to these women we see uh movies about these women that are now like on the big screen um we also have programs that are specifically for women because uh how you mentioned earlier a lot of women end up you know, not staying in the industry long term uh, because they don't feel like they belong because they don't see themselves here. Um, yeah. So program like uh, Women Who Code and Girls Who Code, they have specific programs that will bring together groups of diverse women in the classroom because that is shown to be more effective than them being in co-ed classrooms because they feel very much like other. 
just like if you're like you know it, you know sometimes women are doubly uh, biased because we are latino or we're black and we're yes. women as well of course and so you we've been talking about you know how um in the world basically like you started out in sales like you, you weren't necessarily on the end of like behind the scenes actually inside tech you were at the front end selling the product um what are other opportunities that in, in case someone is like i don't know that i have the ability to code but they have a familiarity in sales themselves like what is what are some of the other options they can take behind the scenes in tech uh, well there's definitely uh jobs beyond just being a software engineer you can be a program or a product manager um you can be uh marketing you can do a uh, scrum manager you can also do uh, sales you could do sales for software software sales is a huge um industry where you see like direct business to business trying to get software used by other industries and you see that the income potential there is sky high because you're going to get a high base salary and since you're in sales you're getting a huge commission um so if you are very uh people oriented very social and you're not necessarily thinking that you want to do coding forever you can definitely get into sales you could do marketing you can be a product manager where you kind of discuss uh you know your the, the the product and the team and and you know what's going on to other people uh so you're like a liaison um but there's there and you could do like UX and UI design if you're more artistic uh but i think that you also if you wanting to get in this industry you should also take a step back and realize that just because you're not uh what you would call technically inclined yes. uh that you don't have any value to give so i was right. in sales and i love talking to people and i really really enjoyed my job because you know i i was doing sales and i got commission of course and i had really good benefits um but i really enjoy talking to people people would come into the store i used to work at a t-mobile i was doing sales at t-mobile so i would have customers that would come in every few weeks and you know they were regulars they were people that were older that i was trying to help uh because i was really able to explain to them in the most basic terms how to understand the technical things that were going on on their on their phone right or on their uh on their ipad um you know showing people how to use certain things uh you know if there was something wrong with their machine or their uh their phone they knew that I was the person and they also understood that I had uh, a really a good way to kind of explain so i think yeah. that's a skill too uh a lot of times uh when people talk about software engineers they talk about really socially awkward people uh like security <laughs> people yeah um and there's definitely a number of my coworkers who are that way and i i respect that uh but i think that i bring my own qualities uh yes. you know because i'm not like that um <laughs> so i really have a good success talking to other people on my team people who are more like product and marketing mm -hmm. people who are doing sales because i can kind of communicate uh to both sides yeah. and i think that that is a huge um quality that really works in my favor and if you're somebody similar like that then i think you would have good success too you just have to get that little bit of confidence because it is very scary to start um especially when you're doing a career change it's a very scary thing especially when you walk into a room and these are people who have gone to college and some of them are like you know masters and phd's and and they are so technical and you just feel so small uh mm -hmm. but you got to realize that you also bring something into that room because otherwise you wouldn't be in that room yeah so how did you i feel like a good question that i have is like how did you feel how did you conquer that you know i think a lot of women will say you know even it doesn't necessarily have to be a tech space it could be any space where they feel as if um they they don't belong and me being on the gaming end um it's sometimes you feel weird stepping into a space where it's looked at as mostly a male dominant you know area uh how did you overcome those obstacles and do you feel more confident in yourself today with you know with where you're at and going forward and stuff like that 
Yeah, uh, when I first started, I was extremely scared. Uh, there's this thing called imposter syndrome, and mm -hmm. you know oh, yes. where you, <laughs> and, yes. and, and and in in my field, it's it's very high. It's like to the extreme uh, because you know you're you're in these groups of you know with people who are so much more that you would think that are so much more skilled than you are. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know, like, I, I was definitely scared, but in, you know, on the same token, I was also very comfortable in myself. I didn't think that I was better than anybody else, but I also thought that I was unique. Um, mm -hmm. And when I first started working, I was uh, an intern. Uh, so, you know, I understood that being an intern, I wasn't expected to know everything. I wasn't expected to be like, you know, making these huge strides, but I understood that I had some progress to make. I took advantage of my position. I asked so many questions and I made sure that, you know, when I was introduced in a room or a meeting that people understood who I was and what I was doing there. Uh, and I wasn't somebody's assistant. I'm mm -hmm. a software engineer and, you know, I just, ex I, I kind of held people to those higher expectations. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it worked out in my favor. Uh, I definitely had a little bit of confidence there because I kept on telling myself like, uh, you're not here just to take up space. You're here uh, because they expect you to do something, right? Uh, and they have faith that you're gonna perform. And I think that that's important. I definitely had mentors and people around me who gave me that support. Mm -hmm. uh, I also was going to like a, a counselor uh, once a week so I was like verbalizing these thoughts and all of these doubts and you know my counselor she's like well you know you're not just there like I said just to take up yeah. space you're you're there because they want you there you're there because you're doing a good job you must be doing something right so you know don't right. <laughs> be so negative about yourself uh, give yourself some credit yeah. uh, because uh, I promise it. you promise you all these mediocre men are giving themselves a lot of credit <laughs> that's the best way to pull it, put it no no shade against them but you know shade, what you no worked, yeah you've worked really hard especially because you know from your background you like you said you didn't have the traditional way of like going to college and then you know it, it took you a little bit uh longer than i guess your average person who knows exactly what they, I mean, or not very average person who knows exactly what they want to do when they want to do it. But I, I love that you're filling a space. You're not filling a space in a sense like, oh, I'm just here. You're you're making space for more women and young girls to like make their presence known in this industry, um, which I know is very important to you. But also what I know is very important to you is the fact that it's not just about the gender it's also about accessibility for everyone across the board. We kind of dived into this a little bit off when we were chatting, um, but I really want you to shed some light on the accessibility for people who have disabilities, because I don't think that that's oh, yeah. something that we always think about. Uh, when we spoke, I told you, you know, there's certain video games like Fortnite that they have uh, special features for people who are deaf, deaf specifically. Um, and one of their biggest competitors, Ewok, she, Genuine, she's a young girl and she she's won championships before. So I just want you to shed some light on that since that's something that you truly are passionate about. Oh, yeah. I mean, when you were telling me about that, I didn't, because I, I did ask you, you know, if you know of any gamers that are popular, that are, you know, have disability or any accessibility issues. And I was very surprised to learn that, you know, there are several gamers out there who, you know, are not 100% able and are doing really well, especially on, you know, Twitch. So I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. The current work that I'm doing, uh, a lot of the work that I've been doing lately in the past few months, the past year has been to um, address accessibility issues. So, you know, my company uh, is a telemedicine company. So it's obvious that we want to make sure that all of our um users, everybody that comes to our website, everybody that uses our application can use it fully without issue. Uh, we want to make sure that everything works, you know, whether, you know, you're using a keyboard or a mouse, or if you're using some other, maybe like a screen reader or tabbing with keyboard for any other reason. Um, 
And if you're visually impaired, we also have to account for that. So a lot of things, uh, a lot of websites actually, like the big chunk, the big majority of websites are in some way inaccessible to, you know, the full spectrum of people. Um, so we're trying to uh, remediate that uh, specifically on our website and our application. So my job has been to kind of audit all of our issues. So I will go in, uh, you know, and tab through with the screen reader and make sure that everything reads out 100%. Everything is clear. Everything makes sense when somebody is tabbing the correct order. Uh, everything is announced. If you're visually impaired, you want to make sure that the contrast is high enough where you can actually differentiate between the different uh, buttons or anything that needs to be clicked. Um, but it's, it's a really um, tedious thing to do. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Um, but uh, at the same time, it's probably the most worthwhile thing that a website or you know a company that has applications can do because that means that more people are going to be able to access and use your product. Uh, and especially when it comes to video games, that yes. means that more people are going to enjoy, more people are going to share, um, you know, and it really isn't fun, you know, when, uh, you know, you're sharing something that you love with somebody else and they can't fully enjoy it the way that you do. So right. I think it, it totally makes sense. And um, my company is an international company, so we have offices in Canada, we have European, we have uh, Brazil, the US, uh, and in Canada, they actually started to find companies uh, really heavily for not wow. having accessible websites. So that is the first, uh, you know, uh, application that we're looking into the Canadian side, so we can address all of those issues as soon as possible because the fines are like six figure fines uh, on a regular yeah. basis. Uh, and my company just told me within the last week or two that they're going to um, devote a significant amount of budget. Uh, they're going to try to create a team that deals with accessibility. And guess who is going to be on that team? Me. You. <laughs> yes. Congratulations. Um, I don't know if you want to share, but you were just promoted. Oh, um, yes, I yeah. was. yes. So, you know, like we said, Millie is out here doing her <laughs> thing. She's making a difference, which is like the coolest thing ever. And it's all I've ever wanted to do with my life is just make a difference and make sure that women feel included. And again, I just want to thank you for being with us because it was really hard for us to find another woman to speak to outside of you. Um, we it, it was just proving our point that, you know, there's not a lot of women in this space and we wish there was more women to, to get, you know, information from. But it does seem as if like, you know, we're making a little bit of you know, like a little bit progress. of a jump track. Yeah, like little progress, little progress. Like we have girls who code, um, women who code. You volunteered yourself. So can you share some oh, yeah. volunteer work that you've done and just like programs you know of and, you know. For sure. Like um, so when I uh, was doing my boot camp, I really was struggling trying to find my first uh, job or internship or apprenticeship or anything and it was just so hard so um at first i tried to uh volunteer uh with this program uh and i was thinking like yeah this is something i'm gonna get it on my resume yes <laughs> <laughs> for my own benefit um but so it ends up being a volunteer program it's called code nation and they have uh organization in New York City. I believe there's also one in San Francisco. Uh, there might be some other areas as well, but Code Nation pretty much has a program where we provide uh, classes for high school students. So we go to different public schools and we uh, present them like, hey, we want to teach kids how to code and mm -hmm. we want to have a uh, class in your school. So we would have, uh, like, if you were in high school, you'd have like a class two times or three times a week, whatever it was, and it would it would be your uh, that hour or that period. It would be your um, introduction or foundation in in programming. So we would teach the kids the original uh, first year basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and then in the next 
uh, like the second year, we would take them to a specific uh, organization or a company and we would have mm -hmm. the classes there. So the first year, I actually I did two years with them um, in Williamsburg High School for arts nice. and science and uh, taught a bunch of kids there uh, the basics. And then when I went, I graduated to the, like the next level, we were going uh, to Etsy. So Etsy has oh, a huge wow. um, headquarters. I think it's a headquarters, but it's a huge um, office building in mm -hmm. Brooklyn by like Dumbo area. And they gave us like a, a room and they gave us the laptops and everything. Mm -hmm. They gave us snacks for the kids. So they kind of uh, sponsored the program. So, awesome. uh, and everything is free to the students. So even when they come to the high school classes, we'll do, uh, we'll, we bring a big thing of laptops and each of them yeah. will get their laptop um, every every time they come to the class. So they'll have their laptop. Uh, and then throughout the school year, we're also bringing them to different companies, kind of like field trips. So yeah. they actually can see what That's working so cool. in a, uh, a software engineer or you know being a software engineer at a yeah. company actually looks like uh we usually talk to software engineers within that company especially if they're like uh women or uh, more diverse software engineers we just have them talk to the kids like we'll do like we're just trying to um get these kids access we want to show yes. them because if you're just going if you're just a public school kid you don't know what's going on yeah you don't uh, know what's <laughs> yeah, so just... this is kind of like a step in the right direction because we right. what we want to do ideally is show them that this is a viable career path that mm -hmm. you are going to do something that makes a difference you're going to be doing something that's fun you're going to be doing something that pays good and then you're going to be working out an out of an office that they have like a pool table and they have a cafeteria where you could eat yeah, like it's like cool isn't it's that like, like a dream yeah it's like a chill <laughs> you get to chill and work at the same time it's just so nice yeah, so I think the goal is, you know, with the first year and the second year is to kind of foster the idea of, mm -hmm. of a career in technology for these for these kids and uh, support them and follow them through like college. If they need help with internships, we provide that as well. We also like at the end of the school year uh, before the summer comes, we give them uh, like a presentation about all the different summer programs and one of them is uh, Girls Who Code the mm -hmm. New York City Girls Who Code uh, before you know everything went to quarantine they usually also have a summer program which they provide transportation metro cards they provide food and snacks and they also uh, provide laptops for the students to use uh, and it's not just women it's also you know uh, folks who uh, identify as yes, women, yes. you know, so LGBT. LGBT. That's also important as well. Um, uh, shedding light on that as well, yeah. Uh, so that is one. There's also, if uh, you know of any young men uh, that are persons of color, um, high school young men, uh, Black, Latino, there's also this uh, organization called All, All Star Code uh, that is specifically for young men of color. Uh, because those numbers are, are really low as well. Um, so that's another really good organization. And then we have all these groups that are um, uh, resource groups for you know people who fit into different categories, whether you are LGBTQ, you're a woman, you are uh, a person of color, you're a Latino. There are so many different groups that you could be a part of. And if you live in a city that is large enough, you yeah. can find uh, so many free opportunities, uh, free courses, uh, meetups, things like that. Now everything has gone uh, more remote, but yes. I mean, it, 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 there's really so much to take advantage that it's like the list can go on and on. Yeah. And I think that the first step and, and the biggest step that we have, the biggest hurdle is just that not enough people know about it. Right. So I think that, you know, with this and even just like tweeting about things and sharing things, that's going to make a huge, huge difference. Uh, because, you know, how you said earlier, like the, the, these industries are not diverse enough. So yes. how do we expect, uh, you know, a group of white, Asian male, uh, primarily that's that's what we see in technology to create solutions that 
are going to address the problem that somebody like you or me are facing. Yes. Um, it's, it's really it's hard, not. too, because I was even just thinking when you spoke about uh, I, I didn't even put into perspective the pandemic and like what that's done and like how that's probably obviously it's affected us as adults, but it's definitely affected kids, too, because they were so used to going into a space that uh, they could just freely, openly be themselves and then having to stay home um, for almost two years now, depending on where they live and if their schools are physically open and stuff like that. So. I don't even know if, you know, if you know of anything, uh, like, do the programs stay the same? You know, how do, like, do you even know if there's any, if there was any difference between like last year and this year with when it comes to um, the kids and like how they are able to do these programs? Like, did they do them at home? Do they do it? Do they have to physically go? But like, it'd be only a certain amount of them that can go at a time. Um, if you know, I don't know if you know. Yeah, so as far as specifically with programs like Code Nation that has summer and also Girls Who Code that have summer program, uh, last summer they went remote. Uh, this mm-hmm. summer, I think it's still in the air. I don't know if they've finalized. I think they might still be doing remote. Uh, mm-hmm. I also um, do volunteer mentoring with a lot of um, women or young mm-hmm. girls. And they've also talked about how you know their classes have all gone remote. Uh, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we see a lot of young kids that have lost their internships for the summer coming up. And it's really something that takes a toll on young people, especially because these young people have been working so hard and trying for so long to, you know, get these opportunities. And it feels kind of like a personal blow to them, unfortunately. And um, it, it, you know, especially for the uh, more diverse candidates, it's, of course. it's much more difficult. Um, and speaking about the, the pandemic and how it's affected us just in general, uh, my specific job hasn't changed. I have not lost one single day of work uh, right. due to the pandemic. I just simply converted over to work from home. I can do my job 100% remote. I could, Mm -hmm. you know, if I wanted to, I can go to the beach and work from there. Um, (laughs) So that is another plus. Like in technology, I think this is one of the few um, business sectors that has not seen a, a, a hit at all. So we see a lot of lower income jobs, retail jobs, food service workers that end up being laid off or lose their job. And that can affect an entire uh, family, an entire community. And so that's another reason why you want to get into these, you know, tech careers, because there is a significant amount of job safety within these careers Mm -hmm. and uh, so much more flexibility. There's people out there doing jobs in technology that we never even heard of that are making like six figures. And uh, it's not any much. I mean, personally, I don't think that, you know, jobs can be uh so much more difficult but they um they're just you know specific to this industry and you know they pay really well so yeah i mean this you know especially you know if you've been thinking about moving into technology and getting into it this is the time because yeah because i mean what else is there (laughs) yeah what you know literally and it's it's i can speak to that of the job market of today and like how it was already hard prior, you know, and especially if you, even if you have, you know, your degree, your bachelor's degree, it's still not enough these days, which is like so crazy to think about. Um, Cause when I talk to my parents, that's not the same thing that they say to me. And, you know, <laughs> they really push, it's, it's crazy. Cause they really push that on you um, when you're in school and when you're going through high school and like even in college. Uh, but it's so interesting because people you go to school for stuff and then you still can't get a job but to know that the tech industry is searching for all of us out here that that need jobs this is where we need to be we need to get our education on point learn some stuff learn some programs and you know then we could feel maybe comfortable in in the way that we want to live and surviving in this world um i think one thing you really did want to talk about too was the money aspect like People don't, I mean, I obviously schooling, we can talk about how much schooling is and like realistically how that could be, but other options, like you you did a boot camp 
and you were blessed because you went on like basically a scholarship and then even then after that you know you, you really didn't have to come out of pocket like that which i think is incredible but a lot of people don't know I like that, that. There's, yeah they don't know there's options like that we're all thinking well i gotta come out of pocket so yeah if you can give us some you know intel like little well <laughs> it's actually funny that you said that these jobs are looking for you because all of these uh jobs they are looking for you they're looking yeah. for women they're looking for people of color they're looking to diversify um, their numbers because nowadays, especially in the last year, it's become kind of an issue, you know, with uh, Black Lives Matter oh, um, and especially with more women, uh, you know, being in the news and the media, like it's, it's a real problem. Uh, diversity in technology is a huge problem. And so when you say that they're looking for you, you're a hundred percent right. All of these companies, they want, you they want somebody that looks like you they want somebody you know who is black latino women any like anything lgbt whatever yes. like if you can yes. check off a box <laughs> they, they want, want you <laughs> and they might not say it in those many words but mm -hmm. you need to understand that you are valuable at least if you know even if you know it's just something that's like uh checking a box like mm -hmm. if that gets you to the next step then take advantage of it. Exactly. Um, I was trying to go to a boot camp for a number of years, um, you know, while I was, you know, working retail. And the main thing that really uh, was like an issue for me was justifying quitting my job and losing all of that full time income plus commission, mm -hmm. losing my insurance, and also then after losing that coming out of pocket anywhere from fifteen thousand to twenty thousand dollars to go to a boot camp full time for anywhere from three to five months and then spend another three to five months looking for a job uh, so i mean especially for people who are low income that's a huge huge risk and a huge step sure. to even justify taking um so me being the person that i am always trying to hustle I was searching for free like programs. I was applying for scholarships. I was just doing so, 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 so much. Um, and a lot of the times the scholarships were for like lower income or like if you were a woman, you would get like, if they accepted you, you would get like a thousand or 5,000 mm -hmm. Um <clears throat> And then I went to this website for a boot camp, and they had something about a program um, called Tech Talent Pipeline. And that's a program that I applied for. So Tech Talent Pipeline is a program that is sponsored by the city of New York. Mm -hmm. And they sponsor uh, boot camps and they also have college courses that you could take. So like whatever level you're at. So if you're a college student, they can help you uh, and give you like free help with classes or programs that are in college. And then if you're mm -hmm. like an adult and you want to kind of change careers, they can help you. Um, by covering awesome. you to go and it, it's all 100 percent covered so yeah. with this program i applied i wrote like my little amazing <laughs> uh <laughs> essay uh and uh i proved i think the proof was that you had to make like less than fifty thousand in okay. like yeah. the last year uh so i think the last the year previous that i made like 30 30 grand that yeah. year it was a bad year uh i mean I mean, I mean, every year before <laughs> before I got the job, yeah, it was exactly. a bad year. <laughs> Retail is what it is at the end of the day. Um, you know, it is what yeah. it's a rough it's a rough industry. <laughs> Honestly, so, it really is. <laughs> yeah, so I took all the steps. I didn't really think much of it. I'm a real skeptical person, so I mm -hmm. never got excited about it. So I just did the I took the steps. I did the program, and then like a few weeks later they asked me to submit some financial documents just to prove my income and i did that signed some stuff and i was like all right cool whatever they're probably gonna deny me in a few weeks uh but they actually sent me an email and they told me i was accepted and wow. so that same day i spoke to my manager and i was like i'm putting in my notice <laughs> yeah you said two weeks gotta go I'm getting my life together nothing against you guys yeah but uh, yeah yeah no yeah way. so um I was like, this is the, this is the sign that I need. Like, if, like there's, there, I mean, if, if this is financially covered, I don't have to come out of pocket for this. I have, you know, some money that I can pay my rent for a few months. Everything's covered. Everything's 
planned up, mm -hmm. then the only thing is like, do I think that I could do it? Do I think that I would be successful? And at the end of the day, it's like, if I'm taking that risk, there was no other option than to be successful. Cause right. the, the, uh, what's the, you know, what's the other outcome? Like if I'm not successful then I'm, you know, I'm back to working retail and that, yeah. it just didn't make any sense. So I like put so much into it. The boot camp was you know, like nine to five. Uh, every day, uh, and I stayed like even after the boot camp was done, I stayed after until like nine, like eight, nine, ten. I would wow. go home, sleep, and then come right back. So I was like really, really into it. I was one of the um, people in the program who actually did very well. And I'm not just saying wow. that just to, just cause to my own born, yeah. Yeah. but I was like one of the people who who did very well. I put in a lot of time and a lot of effort, and um, uh. I got, I, I, I took the most out of it that I could get. Yes. Uh, I mean, you because took I was like, well, the yeah, yeah, might as well. <laughs> yeah. So I like to say that I, you know, you got to take advantage of what other people take for granted. Um, because that's really what's going to make a difference for you. Um, if yes. you don't take that shot and make the most out of it, then you might as well not have taken that shot at all. Right. Yeah. So you got to shoot your shot. So that was me shooting my shot. And so I like put everything into it. And I feel like because I put everything into it, I finally, you know, got as much as I could out of it. Um, there was an apprenticeship, but that never materialized. There was also part of that program because it was kind of like the pilot program that never really materialized. It was a paid apprenticeship for nine weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and I also left my job thinking that there would, you know, be something there lined up, but that didn't work out. So I was like, all right, great. So that's not going to happen. So uh, I pretty much just converted my entire online persona just to be uh, Neely Codes. So um, awesome. And, uh, you know, everything, like I said, everything from that program was covered. Um, so I didn't really have any cost out of pocket. So that really put me in a really good position. Um, I changed my Twitter handle, I got my domain name, I uh, updated my LinkedIn, website, everything. And yeah. so like every day I would tweet about what I was doing, uh, things I was learning, and that's how I actually got my internship. So, you know, it's kind of like a uh, step. Yeah, you did, yeah, little steps along the way to get to where you are today. And it's, it's honestly admirable. It's literally motivating me to like, <laughs> do the things that I say I want to do, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, we always talk about we want to do stuff, but then you never do yeah. it. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just, and honestly, money tends to be the issue and it's the scary part about it. Um, but we only have about 10 minutes left, you know, to talk about this to everyone. Um, I mean, we kind of talked about what more could be done, you know, when it comes to like funding, obviously you said money, is the greatest thing that you could give people, uh, especially these programs, because these are kids who don't have, you know, maybe they go home and they don't have the, the, the PC or whatever it may be that they need to do these things from home, but they get to go mm -hmm. to these programs to get the materials that they need and to learn more. So again, there's that awareness. I mean, you know, we're trying to, we're trying our best, we're trying to fill the gender gap, basically. There's a huge gender gap. Um, and obviously we're trying to teach kids at a young age, but I feel like we genuinely wanted to end on something that was what we both thought was good. It's just about like gender neutrality in the tech industry. Yeah. And letting kids know that like, you could be a woman and do this, but you could also be a queer male and do this. Um, or you could be a non-binary individual and do this. And it's just so important for us to um talk about it also mix later said let's talk crypto and the future of tech one day would love to <laughs> <laughs> you know we would love to yeah, um and sure. also nfts um mm -hmm. but yeah we just want to talk about gender neutrality neutrality because like you said it's a space for everyone it's not limited just to white or asian men it's for women of all color men of all color and just non-binary people of all color lgbtq plus as well so yeah, let's, let's end yeah. on that beautiful, beautiful note. 
Um, yeah. So, so I guess this message is for just everybody in general. Mm -hmm. um, technology needs these kids, right? So, if you have a young person in your life, boy, girl, whatever, uh, you know, give try to give them the tools. And if you can't give them the tools, at least try to give them your support. Yes. Um, I know plenty of gamers uh, and, you know, people just who I interact with on social media who in the past few years have become new parents. And mm. it's it's really important um, that you teach your children about, you know, gender neutrality um, and, you know, teach, you know, both boys and girls how to behave, you know, um, and how to kind of support you know each other i think that's the most important thing and if you do have a young person in your life support them in any way you can if you uh want to you can even try to bribe them i have a niece i'm trying to bribe her to take some coding courses and so far it's not really working but i told her that i would pay her like 20 dollars 20 bucks every time yeah. she got through it yeah, um there you go so I think that if, you know, if you have a young person in your life and you see that they're interested in something that is, you know, science, math or technology yes. based, that you really need to nurture that uh, because you're going to not only help them, you're going to help yourself as well. And yes. uh, I think you're going to make also a more equitable future. Uh, things in technology are going to be able to serve us all equally instead of perpetuating the biases that we have yes. uh, right now. And uh, definitely buy, go buy some crypto. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Final thoughts on this is the matter. <laughs> yes, go buy some crypto. I was after we spoke. I was like, maybe I should research this so that I know <laughs> uh, because it seems as if you know Bitcoin, crypto, and all that stuff is definitely going to be probably the way of the world sooner rather than later um yes and you know who's buying crypto who? men men oh. oh so if you are a female here go buy yourself some crypto because okay. when crypto goes up who's gonna be rich these us. men oh well them yeah well us women will be i mean rich i will because i have crypto yes yes there you go <laughs> exactly <laughs> you are the percentage we need <laughs> to get yeah, us so to that's, know about yeah. this and that's yeah. another thing that I talk about a lot. Like I don't really tweet a lot nowadays, but mm -hmm. when I do tweet, it's either about like technology and statistics and technology and software engineering, um, and also about crypto. And I actually, this week, I just bought my first NFT and I'm very happy and excited about the the promise of, you know, NFTs and, and how that's going to like explode in the next few years. And, mm -hmm. uh, I think that more people should get into it. Okay. I got to do my research because <laughs> I'm trying to get rich. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I'm trying, to get, I'm trying to get rich. I'm not just trying to be like a little gamer girl with a podcast. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm trying to live yeah. comfortably. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, I just want to say thank you for mm -hmm. joining us again. Um, but yeah. you're gonna say, Go ahead. No, I, I think that there's so much more that I wish that I could do. Like mm. I would definitely like to be more of a gamer i definitely want to learn more about crypto and talk about that i you know i want to be able to get more people into programming and software engineering but it's just so time consuming of course. and um like i even like you know when i was in the discord channel uh i was like crossing. very obsessed about animal crossing <laughs> and probably like early on into last year like towards the middle of the year i kind of had to disengage because i had to really focus on my work and i was trying to get this promotion trying to get a raise and you know i recently got that promotion so it was worth it but i'm, yeah. I'm definitely like mentally because of everything going on i think i need mm. to get back into it yeah for sure i mean you know <laughs> we're here the vga yeah. guys are here the channel is still live um but yeah I think you should. I mean, gaming is fun. It's a great way to relax and to, especially Animal Crossing. They got all this new stuff going on, girl. You, you got to check it out. They got they got all this new I stuff. I know. In Animal Crossing. And shout out to video games being more female friendly, especially yes. Animal Crossing, really catering to that group of female gamers. 
Yes. Smartest Simulation things. games Smart. are the best. Yes. 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 They're the greatest things to ever happen to us. But we're going to wrap this up. Uh, I just want to say thank you again to Millie for being with us today. Where can everyone find you on social media so that they can keep up with you and crypto and anything related to coding? Uh, okay. Well, the, the yeah, so the biggest way to stay in contact with me is on Twitter. Like I said, I don't you know, tweet a lot of general things nowadays. It's more about software engineering and crypto. Uh, but if you want a response from me, send me a tweet. And if you need advice, if you need, um, you know, any information about a program that we mentioned or something specific that you're looking for, reach out to me. I will get you that information. There you go. And we could just find you at Millie Codes, literally, right? That's, that's at Millie Codes. Yes, uh, we have it here on the on the stream. It'll be in the information if you're listening to the podcast on all podcast services. Again, shout out to Millie for stopping by. Shout out to the VGA team for having the save yeah. point and Millie on Thank again. Um, and yeah, let's keep it up. We have a slew of people still today, a bunch of amazing women. Yeah. I was bumping. Hi, Mabel. I was bumping. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, the hit. I was, I was so much fun. Yes, it, it was great. Um, but yeah, the guys are always doing so many great things, and I feel so honored to be here with you today to be able to talk to you. And, yeah. Uh, and to shout out to more. them. Shout yes. out to them for putting this on. It yes. has been so amazing that you, you know, you guys have found a way to really support uh, women and bring them into the conversation in technology and everything and gaming. So I think that huge shout out to you guys. Yeah, for sure. And we will have Millie on again, I'm sure. We're going to have this whole crypto talk because I, <laughs> I need to I need to learn. Mondo will be a part of it next time. Also, shout out yeah. to Mondo. Respectfully, yeah. he didn't. He was like, it's a woman's <laughs> thing. I'm going to let you do it. And he's the sweetest, uh, the true pro out of the two of us. But <laughs> yes, thank you guys so much. Um, I think I think that's it. I mean, I don't have anything else to say to you. No. Keep okay, gaming. Cool. Yes, keep gaming. Play some Animal <laughs> Crossing for Millie while she. Yeah, know, let me know about that. That uh, Sanrio stuff that they just put oh, out. Yeah, like, I saw that. Yeah. So exciting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you.